In today's video, we're going to take a look on another Arctic CPU tower cooler, which does the job and we're going to check out how well does it do. So today we have, this is uh, Arctic Freezer A35 ARGB, addressable RGB, tower CPU cooler for AMD, specifically for AMD socket AM4. Now you have variations of this one, you have A35 plain, you have A35 uh, RGB, ARGB, and then if you want for Intel, you have I35, I35 RGB, and I35 addressable RGB. There are also some other variations of this cooler, but this is, um, I would say, a cool way to cut down the cost because they don't have to supply all other brackets for different types of sockets and... The installation is quite easy and there's no fuss about it. Since I mentioned the installation of this CPU tower cooler, you get four standoffs, four screws that you place through these standoffs directly to the original backplate of the AMD motherboard. Then of course, between the standoffs and the screws, you do need to place those uh, plates where you finally connect uh, the CPU tower cooler. Of course, in between, you do need to remove the plastic foil from the cold plate and place the thermal paste as usually you would do. Now, this cooler is quite nice and subtle. The only thing that uh, I encountered while placing this CPU tower cooler on the motherboard, first place the CPU tower cooler, then place the RAMs because for instance, as you can see from the video, I placed first four sticks of RAMs and then I decided to place the cooler. When you're placing the cooler, you have to remove the fan so you could reach uh, two screws on, well, one screw on each side and to evenly tie it up to the motherboard. When placing the cooler, uh, it, well, basically when placing the fan, you have some sort of a clips two on each side that need to click on the passive heatsink. To achieve that, you do need to have some wiggle space, at least half a centimeter, well, maybe even less uh, when we're talking about placing the cooler from the right side. And this is where the first or the last stick, depending how you look, is uh, basically taking up some space for the fan to be placed on the passive heatsink. Nothing to worry about, it doesn't affect uh, and doesn't even touch the RAMs, just for the placement you do need to remove the RAM. And this is just some sort of a notice so you guys would know uh, and you won't get uh, too frightened about it if, for instance, I don't know, you bought four sticks and suddenly it doesn't fit. What is the reason? What could it be? This is the reason. It's nothing to worry about. You just need to remove that fourth or first, as I already stated, uh, RAM stick to place the cooler. Now, for some specifications, we have direct touch 6mm, uh, four heat pipes going through the passive heatsink, through the cold plate, 54 aluminium fins with thickness 0.4mm, you get MX5 thermal compound, thermal paste, and uh, the whole weight of it is 734 grams. The only compatibility, as already stated, is for the AMD AM4 socket. The fan dimensions are 112 millimeters and the speeds go from 200 to 1700 RPM, which is, of course, controlled with PWM. The cool thing about it is also it has 12 addressable RGB LEDs inside and you connect it with your standard 3-pin 5 volts DIGND connector. The cables, 450mm uh, cable with 80mm sharing cable, uh, black which uh, can be nicely rearranged and organized for the LED and for the PWM you have 200 a millimeter fan cable which is also black so you could reorganize it as you wish now personally i really hate turning computers like this because the air blows directly to my face but totally irrelevant for the review of the cpu tower cooler now as you can see the leds are just remarkable i haven't seen such good rgb addressable rgb to be exact with so many colors and so vivid and so nice and 
You might consider, does this have anything to do with the CPU tower cooler? Well, it does. Since you're buying an addressable RGB, if you're considering of buying addressable RGB, you might consider even checking out the lights. So this one has brilliant lights and that's without a doubt. I think all Arctic products that have addressable RGB look this good. So I placed it on uh, AMD Ryzen 5 5600G and I took that into consideration just because we have a budget CPU tower cooler for a, let's say, budget uh, processor with integrated graphic cards, even though I'm not using it since I have a dedicated one. And to make this a fair play, I use the case that has an open meshed front just to get enough intake. So AMD Ryzen 5 5600G with uh, Arctic Freezer A35 addressable RGB got around uh, 61 to 62 Celsius degrees which is quite all right and this is uh, tested as always in Aida 64 Extreme Edition st system stability test and basically I'm quite satisfied with it. When we're taking into consideration the price, easy mounting and all the other specifications I think this is quite interesting for a budget CPU tower cooler. We can't compare it to Freezer 50 of course because it's more massive, it has more heat pipes and stuff like that and it would definitely cool much better but you can check that video later on after you finish this one of course. So guys, yeah, really nice cooler, really nice RGB, really easy implementation and installation on the motherboard. There's nothing to worry about when we're talking about RAM clearance. As you can see, I have four sticks uh, right here installed. So just for the installation, you do need to remove one if you're not running a very low profile RAMs. So I'll place the links below for the Arctic Freezer A35 addressable RGB so you can check out the price and where to buy it, of course. And finally, don't forget to subscribe if you think I deserve that. Click the like button if the video deserves it and uh, hit the notification bell if you click the first thing so you don't miss any future content. Hopefully, I will see you in another one. Bye-bye.